trend to really come and do our thing back where we started from. And we went, our philosophy was go to try to get some education, get whatever you can, and come back and serve your community. And like I told you, I already had two sisters teaching here in Bluffton. You know where they retired from? Teaching? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Because when I graduated from college in 1950, I had this notion, I said, why not apply to the University of South Carolina Law School? Now, I had already finished college, I had all my certifications, you know, everything with the State Department of Education, and it was a no-brainer. I was going to come back home and teach school. Because all of our teachers had a forehead been brought into Bluffton from different places, you know. We didn't have any homegrown men, black men, colored men, you know, to do that. Our teachers came from Charleston, Columbia, Orange, wherever, but never here. Yeah. So I was, hey, I'm ready to do that. But I had this notion about going to the University of South Carolina Law School because the Supreme Court had ruled in the Herman Sweat case. Herman Sweat versus the University of Texas Law School in Arlington, Texas in 1948 ruled that Herman Sweat was entitled to go to the better or the best of the law schools in the state of Texas rather than be confined to one room, one professor, no library, law school, at Prairie View. So when I graduated in 1950, and I was set to come back home and teach school and you know, do, do my thing and whatever, and because uh, I'd already married my wife, see, I'd gone and gotten married my sophomore year, and we were already married. So when I finished, finished school, and um, so, but I, I said, why not? I said, I don't want to go to law school. I'm going to apply to go to University of Illinois Law School. And what they used to say, all hit the fan in South Carolina. So I came, you know, I came home that summer. Matter of fact, you know, when the headlines came out about it, the governor of the state of South Carolina, which was Governor Strom Thurmond at that time, came back and said no. You know, told him, yeah. and it was all along, and they boycotted me and. I couldn't teach school, so I just, something happened. You know, I had some buddies and uh, I just went to Detroit. That was the best thing that ever happened for me, but, but um, you know, I was black, black ball. The only, th only thing I was certified to do, you know, I had a college degree and I was certified to teach school, but. You were black ball for teaching in the state of South yeah, Carolina? I was right there. Not only I was back, but all my two, I told you my two sisters who were already teaching here retired from Pennsylvania. They got black ball too and had to go teach somewhere. Yeah, else. they got run out of here, yeah. All because you applied to law school. Yeah, because I, tried, I attempted to get into the law school. And you never did get into the law school? No, I said. How did they communicate that to you? Huh? How did they communicate that to you that you were not going to get to go? What did they say? They just the government said, came out and told them. The whole state to say to tell the tell, tell the dean not to you know this university not to let me in. Was that for all African American people? No, they were speaking to me. I was the only one that applied. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Was that <laughs> because he was African American? Because that was the policy. You know, that was the policy. And and, and blacks didn't go to the University of Carolina Law School until after uh, this boy went to Clemson. You know, the mayor of Charlotte, until he went to Clemson. That was, in, was until 1962 or something like that. But when uh, uh, he went to Clemson, integrated Clemson, you know, University of South Carolina wasn't integrated until after that. So now you said the Supreme Court stepped up for Spelt in Texas. Well, that was the sweat in. case. But what about the Supreme, why did the Supreme Court step up for you in South Carolina? Well, I didn't, my case didn't get to the Supreme Court. See, that was the, that was the sweat case that went. 
But I, my logic was based on that. I figured, you know, if, if somebody, and now there's a lot of things that went on. Because I did appeal to the NAACP. Harold Bulware uh, was a lawyer for the NAACP in South, in, in South Carolina. Now this is a long story now. You don't want to hear it. And our bishop of the AME Church, because our university is an AME Church school, Bishop Frank Madison Reed I told me that if I got accepted, that they, because I didn't have any money, the AME Church would have paid my tuition if I had gotten accepted. I appealed to the NAACP and asked them if they would look into my case, because I knew if the, the Supreme Court had ruled in favor of sweat, you know, naturally, you know, I came under that same umbrella. And, and uh, but you know, these guys, Strauman, they were defying you. Said, if you don't care what the court said, you know, that attitude that they had back then. And that stuff shit, they still have it, you know, so. And, and um, so, I, the NAACP would not, would not, um, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't respond, didn't intervene, didn't respond. Uh, and Walter White was the national chairman at that time, you know, up in New York. And uh, uh, Thurgood, those were working on the ground versus the Board of Education, but, but I didn't know that. See? So I didn't know until many years later, after Brown Tika, this was 1950. Brown didn't come out until 54, 1954. And I found out very later, you see, Brown was the board, board of, the major case really was a South Carolina case. Of Brown was the board of education, it's a South Carolina case. And, and I found out that, that they did not want to bother with my situation because they were working on Brown versus board of education. And Reverend Delaney, who was the principal person that brought the, the, the South Carolina case in Brown versus the Board of Education. Lenny had two of his daughters who were at Allen University with me at the time when that, when, that, when that happened. But I found out later that they didn't want to be bothered with my law school thing because they were working on Brown versus the Board of Education. And, you know, but well, that's, you know, that's, what is it, 60 years ago. Yeah. So you left for Detroit? Yep. I Did you Detroit. know where you were going or what you were going to do when you left for no, Detroit? No, Did you no, have a job no. Lined but up? I had some buddies up there who I had kept in contact with and, you know, some of whom I had gone to school with. And they said, you know, like, he said, come on up here. So I went. And um, my sister, who was teaching right here, um, uh, gave me the bus fare. I went up there on the Greyhound bus. How much? Huh? How much did it cost? Maybe about three dollars or four or five dollars back then. I know it was in December of 1950. And you just showed up in Detroit? Yep. Did you have a culture shock? Was it different from the South? Yeah, different than, yeah. Different than Bluffton? Yeah, it was definitely. Adjustment? Was it hard to adjust? Or you adjusted well, right no, away? No, I didn't. I didn't have any, any, any problem, you know, adjusting. I went up there looking for something to do. And you got <laughs> I was fortunate. I, 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 I had a lot of opportunities. I said, you know, faith controls all of our lives. And, um, you know, that's what mine. And I have no regrets. And, but I've always intended to come back home from day one. I've always intended to, or even my wife didn't believe me. I wasn't sure about it until it actually happened. That because because we were living, we didn't have any reason to come back to Bluff. <laughs> 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 we didn't have any reason, but we have, we, I've always intended to come back home. Because I, 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 had, I had done better than I even ever thought I would. But my philosophy has always been to whatever I achieve, whatever I learn, was to come home and use it in my own community. And when I retired, 
primarily from my major, uh, say, occupation. I could have gone any place in the world to live if I wanted to. I had friends that went to Mexico, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, everywhere to live, buddies, you know, that I would I go and say, hey, let's go live here. I have some of them even live down on Hilton here. But my goal has always been to come to my own, back to Bluffton. And I wanted the people in Bluffton, that were a little one square mile, I always had a little one square mile to know that the world did not end at Buck Island Road. That the world was way much more than that. And I had an opportunity to, you know, explore it, some of it. Just to finish your story about um, law school, was your younger brother inspired to apply after you? No, Dan, Dan always told me. Dan always told me, he said, That's, I inspired him because inspiration came from me. I have a brother who lives in Charleston. He went to law school. And his son went to law school. He was a judge, elected a circuit judge in the state, and his son is presently a judge. And they went to the University of South Carolina no, law no. school? His son oh. did. His son did. His son did. His son did, because, okay. you know, uh, when little Danny graduated, went up there, I said, you know, this, and he's then new to history. Little Danny graduated from USC, because when the little Danny finished Howard University, the little Danny had offers to Georgetown, Columbia, you know, everywhere. And his father asked him, Danny, yeah, my brother, asked him, so where do you plan to practice? He said, well, I plan to practice with you in Charleston. He said, well, if you plan to practice with me, you go to USC. <laughs> and, you know, so he went to USC. And, um, that, you know. Where did your brother go? Dan went, he went to that little school that they had over there, that, that one thing, because they probably had a couple of more professor by then, you know, then. <laughs> but then he finished up on his, but he started at Howard. He started at Howard University, and then he finished up at South Carolina State. So he went to the one room, and he got well, a law degree from I, the one I, I maybe, know you say one room. Dad didn't finish until 1960-something, I guess. I think Dad was finished in 60-something, and they might have had a couple of rooms by then. <laughs> but, uh, but he came out of there with a law degree. And the yeah, right to practice yeah, law yeah, in yeah, South Dad, Carolina. Yeah, not only that, he was elected to the legislature, and he was he, he was elected a circuit judge. Well, he was on the judiciary committee of the South Carolina legislature. So, what about the rest of your brothers and sisters that left? Did they have the urge to come back to Bluffton? Also, did any of them? My older sister did. My, my older sister came back, and um, but the others, you know, they had their families in Maryland and. Philadelphia, and my oldest brother was up in Detroit, and you know, their families are different places and whatnot. But um, some of us that wanted to and had the wherewithal to do it, we came back. And what about your kids? Did they come back? Whose kids? Your kids. Who's that? That's, that's, that's a kid. That's my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she came down here for a while. Okay. And is that a common phenomenon where? You leave and come back. Constance, did you leave? No, Constance, no. Constance, born in Detroit. Constance, Constance just came down here a few years ago. Born just in Detroit? Yes. Grew up in Detroit? Yes. And moved to Bluffton? Yes. How about that? And she went to Dartmouth. 